disclaimer. If you have a short attention span and your first instinct is to not listen by not watching this video carefully all the way through before commenting in the comment section, then this video is not for you to watch and you should have scrolled away instead of clicking slash tapping on it. Please only pay attention to the video if you're actually committed. On this channel, I'll be talking about whatever I fucking want. Now, as we all know, racism has been a very common topic for decades. Since then, racism happens every day in the outside world, like here in the United States. And it's still happening these days, like when Eric Gartner was put in a chokehold and to I can't breathe at least 11 times. Then fast forward to six years later, George Floyd said, I can't breathe 28 times because Derek Chauvin had to kneel on this black man's neck for over eight minutes. And those are the examples as to why racism is still happening in real life by some white cops who do not deserve jobs. But this is much bigger than racism in the outside world right now. Because in the inside world, which is the internet, favoritism happens among YouTubers who don't get the same treatment. Back in August 24, 2022, I watched a video from Corey X. Ketchen about his experience with racism and favoritism on the YouTube platform where the employees who work on YouTube.com behind the scenes will go as far as to be interested in his YouTube video on a video game you're playing because you're black and not the other YouTubers because they're white. So why did YouTube interested Corey Exception's video at only at, and not Market Wire's video or especially any white creator's video? My guess is that YouTube had an automatic system that still can't determine which video is either supposed to be a restricted based on its community guidelines or a human that YouTube did this. My answer is that it could be both. Because I say that, it comes with a simple answer. YouTube has favoritism against black creators. Let me explain further. When I found out why a YouTuber I watch got erased from this website, I thought that maybe that this black man quit because his numbers aren't doing so well and that his channel that once had 743 subscribers have been stagnant since he was uploading videos of him reacting to scary videos. Once in a while, he'll upload videos like Karen type videos or a certain rapper who came out of nowhere. So I thought he decided to delete his YouTube channel for good, but I was wrong. His name is Amarian Walker. He goes by Walker the Kid on YouTube. When I ask him, hey, 
Amaria. What happened to your YouTube channel, Walker the Kid? He responded to me by saying, Bro, they said it violated community guidelines. Then I asked him in the next minute after his response on Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022 at 2.57 p.m. Did he get three strikes? Because that's what's supposed to happen if you break community guidelines. So I waited for an answer for about almost a week since then, and I still have no answer back from him yet. But then on Saturday, August 27th, 2022, he said, nope, only had one. And then fast forward to May 2023 this year, I watched a video about Logan Mickey from April 26, showing that he is breaking YouTube TOS and YouTube doesn't punish him for it. And I watched this guy's content on TikTok, so I didn't really know if he was breaking the YouTube community guidelines until I looked it up. And I found that on YouTube's fan receptive practices and scans policy section labeled videos spam. And one of those reasons YouTube have listed are posting the same content repeatedly across one or more channels. So my question to YouTube directly is, why does the YouTube moderation team not terminate a white YouTuber for legitimately breaking YouTube community guidelines for spamming the same content, but can terminate a black YouTuber who only had one strike on his channel? Because that's what I really would like to know, since YouTube let Logan Mickey get away with it, probably for two years now, since YouTube Shorts became a thing. And he also created Logan Mickey Shorts on February 6, 2023, this year, which had been five months ago since he uploaded probably the same content again on YouTube as well. Does that mean that he's not a good content creator because he makes content that he either does experiments or in the mall interviews with random people who are his age or twice his age? No. No, it does not mean that he ain't a good content creator because he makes that type of content, which I'm certain almost every YouTuber or TikToker does. But, what it does mean that Logan Mickey is a bad content creator because he spam uploaded the same content that he made for his main YouTube channel onto Logan Mickey 2 and Logan Mickey Shorts, which is against YouTube's community guidelines. So the motion that YouTube has these rules, but they don't enforce it quickly enough shows that YouTube is incapable of abiding by what they preach. I want YouTube to actually be quicker to enforce their guidelines instead of letting people like Elkin Mickey get away with it because he doesn't read the community guidelines. In fact, they should also reach out to a Mary Malker and get his Walker the Kid channel back because the biggest mistake YouTube has made is the most inconsistent thing that they can do. If YouTube is going to terminate a YouTuber's channel because that YouTuber only got one strike, then they should terminate a YouTuber for spamming his content on three of his YouTube channels. So, is YouTube's system racist? No. But if that were to happen, when every single black YouTuber got 
Tracer did that the channel terminated for not breaking the YouTube community guidelines because every single black YouTuber, like Walker the Kid, didn't get three strikes, and every single white YouTuber, like Loki and Mickey, are spam uploading the same videos or spam uploading all different videos in a day or in three years and never got terminated from this lap for so long then millions of black youtubers would have to call out youtube if that was the case however it is favoritism because youtube's ten system tends to show that they favor white creators more than black creators. Bottom line, YouTube should have acted swiftly against, and I hate using this term because nobody knows what it means, quote unquote, bad actors who are straight up not doing everything right by the book and just terminate them early on in the first place and not let it go on forever like they did before when they had the community guidelines in place. YouTube should have enforced their spam, deceptive practices, and scams policies more often instead of resorting to falsely terminate a small black creator who had 743 subscribers at the time because he had one strike only. Please do the right thing immediately, YouTube. And stop playing favorites.